great morning great great morning how are you guys hello to our replay viewers good morning good afternoon or good evening whatever time you are joining us um i appreciate you for joining us today my name is demita mcgee i am half of team mcgee my husband and i um, own a company called the christian business academy worldwide and right now we are going through this book you guys called business secrets from the bible by rabbi daniel lappin and so i appreciate you for hanging out with us today we're starting a little later today than we normally begin but hey what is my dog barking about okay but hey it's all good so first things first if you are joining us please do the usual and let's let some people know we are live because we are a little later than we normally are um hold on one second let's see what we can do here oh my husband's home early from work that's what's happening that's what's happening good morning i'm in the basement on video honey okay hold on y'all All right. Hey, Lonnie. All right, y'all. So good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, I think I tagged some of our usuals. And thank you guys for joining us. I really appreciate you for hanging in and being gracious with me this morning. Listen, y'all, at the time of this recording, it is the very end of the school year. It is uh, my son is in eighth grade hey sis great morning my son's in eighth grade and it has been a challenging year doing 100 percent e-learning and so last night we were up we've been up late every night for the last couple of weeks just trying to make sure he gets everything completed so he can graduate on time and um not have to go to summer school yeah, and it has been whew, a whole notion. And so this morning I had to wake him up. He got up late. I had to wake him up this morning, help him with some things. So I appreciate you guys for being so gracious and, and merciful and accepting that I was a little late beginning this broadcast today. Because let me tell you, oh my God. Oh my gosh. I don't know why my friends didn't tell me sometimes it can be challenging just to get children through eighth grade because they just don't always understand the importance of completion and education and that wait until the last minute. Oh my goodness. And you guys, I don't want my son to go to summer school because I don't want to go to summer school. So we're trying to finish everything up strong and make sure he graduates and he has two classes that are right on the border of pass fail so again i appreciate you guys for your graciousness um i appreciate you for popping on later hey eugenia hey let's i see you ladies i appreciate you so much um but we got to get this this one through eighth grade you guys <clears throat> and so as a result yeah that is why i'm late this morning but let's dig in <laughs> to get my whole mind right oh my god jesus of nazareth thank you god all right mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay see people are feeling me this morning let's guys i remember those days i didn't want to go to summer school either and you know it isn't that i have an issue with summer school at all congratulations mom you did it they're grown now it's just that i know if he's in summer school, that is a another massive amount of follow-up <clears throat> that I need to do with him to in order to ensure he finishes that work too. Man, you guys, pray for your sister. Eugenia was like, oh yes, I ended up needing to put my seventh grader in summer school for language arts. Oh my God, that is one of the classes that he is like right there. So <clears throat> we will see after today, after this slew of assignments that he is... Uh, turning in that he has turned in over the last several days if you could ace these assignments in the last week of school you could have aced them all quarter like it makes no sense you guys this that is not something he picked up from his parents <laughs> i don't understand all right 
oh my shirt's not buttoned. All right, let's get into let's dig into um today because this is not about my son and our adventures getting through eighth grade. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we're about to have a teenager now, you guys. Nobody told me, Laskaya, Eugenia, Tanisha, y'all didn't tell me ahead of time. I'm just saying, y'all didn't tell me. All right, let's dig in. And I got some hair crazy stuff. Listen, I literally just threw myself together, you guys, so I could hop on here. So your grace, I'm telling you, your mercy, I appreciate you this morning. We're going to dig into this chapter, though, um, because this one is, is a powerful chapter. And I, as I was reading through it, you guys, I... The, I found myself thinking, Lord, help me get even an even better and even deeper understanding, you know? So, um, what we're about to do today is we're going to dig into secret number 15. We are officially on secret 15, y'all. We are really just making our way through this thing gradually, just making our way through it. The time is passing. We're reviewing the secrets. We're learning and we're getting that good knowledge. And so today we're really digging into developing all four dimensions of our lives simultaneously. Develop all four dimensions of your life simultaneously. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I have three, two adults and one seventh grade. <laughs> you spread those bad boys out, didn't you? All different challenges. I know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's see. Laskaya said, my son did that too. I didn't think he was going to graduate high school. I think that says two weeks before graduating, he turned in all his work and brought his grades from F's to C's. And so I truly understand you. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Why am I stressing out over my son's grades? But I am like, let's get this right. OK, so, dear Lord, thank you so much for another day. God, we thank you for your, your mercy. We thank you for your graciousness. Father, we thank you that we get to see another day that you have created for today is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And if father this morning, I just need a special anointing from you. My nerves were a little flustered from being late, hopping on this call, asking everyone for their grace, allowing me to hop on 30 minutes later than normal, working with Jalen on his work, ensuring that he's doing what needs to be done and helping him as best I can as his mom um, to help him get through eighth grade through graduation and so father none of that do i want to have on my mind to distract from the wisdom that you really want to impart in your people this morning so i'm asking you to take over i need your wisdom i need your knowledge i need you to take over this morning because i cannot do it by myself today and so i'm asking you father you said wherever we send your word wherever we decree a thing it shall be established and so this morning father i don't send your word i ask for your word in me i ask you to establish in me this morning the ability to share the information that you want us to get from this secret um, in this book. God, I ask you to take over. I ask you to teach. Holy Spirit, do what you do because I need you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Let's dig in. Let's go. And I won't keep you long. We're going to go through this. So we may pick up some more tomorrow because it's already... Um, really, really, really late. So thank you, Laskaya. She said, thank you. I actually, yes, amen. She said, I actually needed that 30 minutes. That, that just, thank you. <laughs> all right. So today we're talking about developing all four dimensions of your life simultaneously. One of the things that he points out in this chapter, he says that, you know, from a pre, from the previous chapter, you may get the mistaken notion that, all I want you to do is work, 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 work. That I overvalue work and no other aspects of your life are important. And that's not what he wants us to believe at all. Okay. Not it at all. What he wants us to understand is he under, he knows that there are different aspects of our life. We got our families. We got our hobbies. We have um, friends. We have a lot of different aspects. We're not one dimensional creatures. And so, yes, he gets that. We do need to value our work, but we don't want to overvalue work at the expense of everything else. And so um, developing ourselves in all dimensions is really, really important. It's so interesting that he would say that I remember a really good friend of mine, like a really, really, really good friend. She said, she used to say to me, Demina, I don't know how you do so many things at one time. I literally have to focus on one thing. 
I can't have all these goals in all these different areas because if I have them, I'm going to drop the ball on all of them. I need to just focus on one thing and one thing only. Well, I have always been the person that I never just have one goal at a time. I never do. Because if I'm only focused on one thing, something feels off and I don't get that one thing done. So recently, I was saying to myself, I want to get better in each aspect of my life. Okay. I really want to be better at, um, I want to be better at personally developing, not just business development, but personally developing. I want to be a better mom. I want to be a better wife. I want to be all, uh, I, I want to be the best version of Demita possible. And Demita, I know is not just an entrepreneur. Demita, I know is not just a leader. Demita is a mom. Demita is a wife. Demita is a friend. Demita is a citizen. Um, Demita is all these things. And so when I look at who I am and the multiple dimensions of my life, I think to myself, I don't want to just develop one at a time. Because if I only focus on one thing, if I only focus on business exclusively, which is very easy for me to do, I'll be honest. If I only focus on business exclusively, then my health, I'm going to push it to the side. Um, then I'm going to push my family to the side. Um, I won't be available to help the kids when they need it. When I only focus on business exclusively, when we get that far out of balance, everything else just kind of falls by the wayside. I was talking to um, my coach yesterday and she was saying that she really doesn't like to use the term balance because um, people think that all areas of their lives are supposed to be equal. And if they're not, then something's not right. I like to use the term focused balance because there are the ebbs and flows of life. There are the ebbs and flows of business. There are the ebbs and flows of, you know, motherhood, ebbs and flows of marriage. There are ebbs and flows to every aspect and every dimension of life, right? So I say I want to be a better parent. So I spend time focused on making sure I have time available for my kids. If I don't do that, that's when frustration sets in. When I'm trying to do other work and the kids need something, that's when frustration sets in. So that's one area. I focus on saying, okay, listen, I really want to be a better wife. So what do I do? I'm reading a book right now called The Love Dare. I told you guys about that about a week ago, I think. And so I'm doing that simultaneously while working on my parenting skills. Um, one of the challenges that I've had recently is with Jalen and um, this thing with eighth grade. Part of me was like, no, you're going to have to fail eighth grade, go to summer school, suffer the embarrassment of summer school because, and if you don't make it through summer school, repeat eighth grade. And when you repeat eighth grade, thank you, honey, let me focus. When you repeat eighth grade, guess what? You will understand what that feels like and you will never want to do it again. All right. However, the other part of me said, no, mom, you got time to help him fix this. Show him how to fix it what is the lesson in this i said he won't appreciate it as much today but perhaps by the time he's 30 he will perhaps then because i realized that as a mom i realized that i didn't appreciate the things that my parents did for me until i was about 30 and had kids my own so no he won't necessarily appreciate the sleepless nights he's had over the last several weeks but he will be happy when he graduates so it's working on parenting at the same time, working on, um, you know, marriage at the same time, working on all these various dimensions of life at the same time, working on my health at the same time. Right now, I'm using this app. It's called 13.1. 13.1 is how many miles a half marathon is. For a long time, y'all, I've wanted to run a half marathon in every state in the United States, every single state, right? And I used to be an avid runner. I used to run 10 miles, like nothing. However, I got really, really focused on work at the time. I was an operations manager and retail at the time. I remember getting the promotion and health just fell by the wayside because I got so busy with work. Um, so now I'm using this app, focusing on health, focusing on marriage, focusing on children, family, and also building business at the same time. That's what we're doing here. Focusing on mindfulness, meditating, focus, focusing on spirituality, spending time with God, all these dimensions simultaneously. I said all of that to say that if I miss one of those, I feel off, off. 
So if you're a person that's like, I do all of these things at once, and people are like, how are you doing that? I get it. You want to develop your whole person because when you are not developing the entire you, something feels off. And you can't always put your finger on it, but something is off. So he doesn't want to give you the impression that he only believes in work. There's more to it than that. He said he wants you to understand that, yes, these things are important, but this book is called Business Secrets from the Bible. <laughs> Not boating secrets from the Bible or hobbyist secrets from the Bible. The instructional focus here is on developing your professional life. We are talking about your work life here, not your personal life. And at work, you work, period, right? However, do understand that you cannot in life focus on only one aspect of yourself. You must develop all aspects simultaneously. What's up, Tawana? I see you, beautiful. Um, you must develop all aspects simultaneously. And you must do so in order to feel complete. You can't succeed in business unless all of your other needs are met, you guys. You can't just focus on your professional needs and then no other needs are met. This is really important because, see, the world would have you to believe you only focus on money, 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 money. Be driven, 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 driven. Focus on business, business, business. Work, 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 work. And then a lot, and we do so at our own peril. We lose our families. I remember in my previous network marketing company, I would hear so much about how you have to sacrifice for a season. And we hear that today still, sacrifice for a season. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. But the reality was I had a whole husband and three children. At the time when we first started, wow, when we first started one child, then two, and then three. And I remember thinking, I can't sacrifice the way you got, because I was the one that was really building that business. My husband and I worked, did it together, but I was the one that was really hyper-focused on it. And I thought to myself, if I focus for a season, I don't know how long this season is, okay? And the way that I understood it in that company in the past by our leadership and mentorship was it was at all costs. You focus on your business at all costs, and then... Once you have your business in an established place and established in that company meant the top rank in the company. Once you had that, then you could go ahead and start living a more balanced life. Well, what happens to my children in the process? What happens to my husband? I couldn't, I couldn't quite understand that. My thought process was, listen, I still have a whole family. Where are they supposed to be in the process of me sacrificing them for a season? And it just didn't line up with my personal uh, values. What I have since learned is we do have to sacrifice something for a season. And for a lot of us, it may be the enjoy enjoyment of maybe we're vacationers. It may be the enjoyment of um, maybe we go to the movies. Maybe we Netflix and you know, binge watch Netflix every single weekend. You may have to sacrifice those things, but you can prioritize properly and you can focus on your family. You got your business. You have your spirituality. You have your health. I even remember somebody saying, like, I see y'all trying to go to the gym and trying to get fit. He said, I was out of shape until I hit the top level in the company. No, that doesn't make it right. Mm -mm. I'm not preaching that. I'm preaching, guess what? We are multi-dimensional beings. And you got to focus on all dimensions at the same time. And that's what you have to learn. Exactly. Exactly, Tawana. That's beautiful. Family is our first ministry. You cannot sacrifice your family for business. That's just not an option. And so we have to, what he talks about here is making sure that we don't, Ignore any elements of our life. Ignore any dimensions of our life. And he explains why balance is so important. We've all seen somebody who was so uber focused on work that they lost their family in the process. Right? We've all seen it. They have no connection with their children. We've seen stories of it. No connection with their children. And then we've seen the person who was so focused on family, they couldn't get their business life together. Like their professional life sucked. Like you are literally doing one at the expense of the other. If you can't pull away from your family so you could take care of business, then guess what? You are lopsided in the other area. 
that's why business or that's why balancing or not balance, but that's why developing and focusing on all dimensions, all four at the same time is so incredibly important. When people become despondent about not reaching a goal, often it is because they have adopted a one dimensional view of their lives. This is really important. Think about this. I, I, and I know this personally, if I don't hit a business goal, I'm just devastated. Or so that's how I used to be. I'd be devastated. And you know why? Because I was only really focused on that goal. I wasn't focused on ensuring my marriage was great. I wasn't focused on ensuring I was being a great parent. I wasn't focused on ensuring that I was developing my health. Now, if I miss a goal, maybe I miss a health goal. Okay. The other dimensions of my life are going great. Now I just got to keep working on that health goal at the same time, but I'm not devastated, right? But if I'm pouring all of my energy into my health goal and nothing else, and then I miss it, <coughs> oh, I'm devastated then. I'm devastated at that point. But this is why you develop multi-dimensionally. This is such a powerful statement. When people become despondent about not reaching a goal Often it is because they have adopted a one dimensional view of their lives. Y'all, that's huge. I'm going to show, let me see if I can pull it up really quick. Um, it was so funny when I was reading this chapter, I was like, oh my God, this reminds me of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then of course, that's what this chapter is all about. You guys remember when we studied psychology in high school, um, and then when we just when we study psychology in in um let me find a good one that simplifies it. And then when we study psychology in college. Hold on, let me find a really just a simple one that we can look at real quick. Here we go. All right, let's close this down here. And I'm going to share my screen really quick. Okay. There we go. All right. So you guys see this? I'm going to make it so you see it only. Okay. There we go. What we're looking at right now is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There was a gentleman named Abraham Maslow. And so I just learned today that he was a Jewish psychologist. And what he did was he broke down what it is, what it is that people need in order to feel fulfilled. It starts from the very bottom and we go all the way to the top. So we have our basic needs, we have our psychological needs, and then we have self-fulfillment. We have to start here. If a person's physiological needs are not met, guess what? They will never make it. To self-actualization. Self-actualization is what we really want. Y'all, that's what we're looking for. Okay? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for, we want to be the person that is completely, you know, excited, happy, fulfilled, love our lives, hit our goals. Like, we are living our dream life. We are exercising our fullest potential. We're able to think creatively. Um, we're, whatever that successful life looks like for you, if it's vacationing, you know, once a year, four times a year, once a quarter, if it's the beautiful family that you've envisioned, you've hit your business goals, that's what we all really want. That's when we are self-actualized actualized yes i said that correct that's what we're all fighting for the phase of this table that is self-actualization that's what we all want we want to feel fulfilled and we want to feel joy in achieving the goals that we've set for ourselves actually reaching our fullest potential that's what we want that's what we set out to do when we're kids and people say what do you want to be when you grow up that's what we set out to do but we can never get there if we don't start at the bottom. So the first thing that has to happen is we got to have food, water, warmth, and rest. We got to be able to eat. See, without our physiological needs being met, the reality is, guys, we wouldn't be here. We die. You need to eat to live. You need water to live. You must have those things. Our physiological needs are needs that if they're not met, we're not going to live. 
It's a life or death situation. So they must be met before we can even get to the next level. And this is the, in the interesting thing. You don't skip levels. We need them in order to go to the top of this thing. We actually need them. And so first we need to have our physiological needs met or else we don't survive. Then we need to have our security or our safety needs met. Security and safety. We need to have those. If we aren't safe, guess what? Once again, it could mean the difference between life and death. All right. So our basic needs must be met before we can even attempt to get to our psychological ones. Right. This is so interesting because I remember when I studied this in high school, this didn't make, it meant nothing to me. And now I get it as an adult how insanely important this is. You cannot get to one level without first fulfilling the bottom or first fulfilling or fulfilling those first basic needs. Think about how many times we'll tell somebody, yes, we'll pray for you. But sometimes people need prayer and they need a meal. Think about that. And so we're putting ourselves in a position that we can help people with even their most basic needs. So if we tell a person, listen, listen, I can't give you everything, but I can give you what I have. And what I have is Jesus in prayer. Great. Give them Jesus. Give them prayer. Can they hear you if their stomach is growling? Can they hear you if they're so thirsty and they're so parched and dehydrated? We got to help people with their basic needs before we can even get to the needs in their mind. God created us to be a solution. That's why we're so interconnected. Y'all, this stuff is powerful when you truly start to understand it. Right? So we get our basic needs met. From there... Now we can move on to the part of the hierarchy that has to do with our psychological needs. It's our belongingness and our love needs to have. Now, these are important needs. Now, we're not going to die technically if we don't have them. However, he goes over some things in the book that makes you kind of see it from a different perspective. There is a chance that, yes, we actually could. Okay. But it's our need to have relationship because God created us to be connected. How many times have we said that over the last 14 secrets? And now we're saying it again in secret number 15, God created us to be connected. And then there's that feeling of accomplishment. Y'all know y'all heard me say recognition, babies cry for it. Grown men die for it. We need to be recognized. We need to have that feeling of accomplishment. So those are our psychological needs. But we got to meet the basic needs before we can even start working on this. Nobody is worried about feeling prestigious or relationships when they're hungry. We meet the basic needs first. Then we hit those psychological ones. And once those are done now, we can move on to self-actualization where we are actually achieving our fullest potential. Now, this is one of the things a lot of us, we kind of remember from high school we kind of remember from college, it's called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. I know y'all have seen it before. What he does right here in Business Secrets from the Bible, however, is something quite powerful. He takes this and he says, listen, you may not need to understand every you know, step or every level in the hierarchy of needs. But what's really important to understand is why they work the way they work. Okay, why do they work this way? And we're going to dig into that, but I'm not going to dig into it today because I was so late getting started today. And it's going to take us probably just another hour to go over the rest of this chapter. So we're going to do it tomorrow. However, this is really important. I love this part. He says your life will look and feel distorted if it is overdeveloped in one area and underdeveloped in another. Developing them simultaneously, it is important. Now, he says that when you do that, you will cultivate a well-rounded fullness of life that will allow you to remain enthusiastic and excited about your present and your future. The key, this is powerful, y'all ready? The key is to be able to identify what area you are lagging behind in so you can focus on whichever specific area needs more attention bringing your life back into balance and harmony. I like that word harmony because see, when I think of harmony, I think of a quartet. I think of four people singing together and I think of somebody when they get a little too loud and it's not in harmony, you hear them more than everybody else. The way for it to sound good is for them to get back in harmony, right? I hear somebody is 
off key and singing a little too low, the way for things to sound good is for them to get back in harmony. And what you're looking for in your life is harmony. That's what you're looking for, harmony. And so when you're working so hard and you're grinding and you're grinding and you're grinding, that your health gets out of whack, you're out of harmony and it feels off. And what you want is harmony. Let me tell you what that looked like for me. For the last couple of months, I've been working so hard, right? I was not focused on my health enough. I've been so sleepy and so tired. I get this midday slump. And I'm just like, this is crazy. I'm tired of being tired. Now, the automatic response for something like that is I need to get more sleep. So you call yourself trying to go to bed a little earlier, right? And then you find out that when you go to bed a little earlier and you get up, you're still tired. What is going on? Why am I still tired? Well, guess what? It is because my health was out of whack. Not just my sleep. My health was out of whack. So what does Demita have to do? Demita has to get her health back in order. And so that means I got to push through a really tired day and make myself go for a run. That means I got to push through when I want to eat something quick and I actually have to eat something quick and healthy at the same time. You guys, this is so insane. I have more energy right now because the last week I have really been focused on health. Um, I have more energy right now than I've had in two months. In two months. And in just a matter of maybe two weeks of focusing on health, eating better, things like that, I already lost a couple pounds. Okay? But my energy is back. Because guess what's happening? Things are getting back in harmony. I'm prioritizing where I need to prioritize. This past weekend... Oh my God, I was so frustrated. Not with anybody. I was looking too far ahead for a goal that I have. Way too far ahead. And because last week wasn't as productive for me business-wise, as many weeks have been in the past, we had some wins. We had some wins last week, but not as many wins as I wanted to have. I didn't have as many wins this month as I wanted to have. And because of that, I was like, oh, my God, I'm not going to hit my goal. I'm not going to hit my goal. Oh, my God. So what did I do? Because an overwhelmed mind, a confused mind, an overwhelmed mind, they should shut down. Literally will shut down. That's how my mind is. It's like everybody else's. When I'm overwhelmed or confused, I literally, my mind shuts down. All of my creative energy, gone. I can't think straight. I don't come up with good ideas. It's just zapped. It's gone. And so what did I do? Saturday is a prime day for us to get a lot of work done. Saturday morning, I was productive. Early Saturday afternoon, I was productive. But guess what I did after early on Saturday? By two o'clock on Saturday, I just shut down. I stopped working. I went outside and I trimmed hedges because I'm, I'm an outdoor kind of person. I went outside, I trimmed hedges, worked on some gardening stuff. I was in my lawn. I started touching the dirt, feeling the dirt, touching the trees, feeling the trees. The kids came outside. Jacob was playing with his little basketball hoop. Giselle was just running around for, between helping me and playing with Jacob. My husband was working on something with the car. Our oldest son came outside for a little while, but then had to go back inside and get some work done. But the point was I stepped completely away. I didn't do anything work-related for hours. Sunday is the day I told you guys I physically take a Sabbath every week. Sunday is the day I don't do work. So guess what? Sunday, I didn't do any work either. And on Sunday, once again, I took a whole step back. And guess what happened? In 24, 36 hours, the half of the day on Saturday, the full day on Sunday, I was able to get back in harmony. Back in harmony. I need gardening. I need outdoor activity. I need clipping hedges. I need trimming um, things down. I need those things to keep me in harmony. And so what it allowed me to do was clear my mind enough that I could get back to harmony. I'm like, okay, Demita, first of all, you're tripping. One week does not obliterate your goals and you're looking too far ahead in the first place. What do you need to do today? Just today. And I was able to get my mind back right, get right back into my creative zone and back in harmony. See, when you're out of balance, when you're out of harmony, it affects your creativity. You can't be as creative because it's the energy. There's a blockage. <clears throat> I wish I had the right words to be able to explain it. There is literally 
a blockage <clears throat> that stops your ability to be able to be creative, to be able to create anything. We are made in God's image. We are creators. And that is why there are, there are things in place that you don't want to work against. You don't want to work against the spiritual forces in play. You want to go with the current, not against the current. So you can't work 30, 40, 60, 90 straight days and not take a sip it. I'm just saying. Because you're going to be out of harmony. Y'all, that's so powerful. It's so powerful. So, once again, he says, the key is to be able to identify what area you are lagging behind in. I was able to identify it. I need to step back. It was my health, not eating right. It seemed like I just needed to get more sleep, but that wasn't going to fix the problem. I needed to make some adjustments. I needed movement and I needed, y'all, let me tell you, when you start eating plant-based stuff and then you go back to eating certain types of meat, it's just not good. I had a hamburger from Culver's the other day and I love Culver's. I was like, I will never eat this hamburger again. I've been eating Beyond Meat burgers for the last, I don't know how many months. I ate this hamburger and I was like, oh my God, I feel like, bleh. and I love Culver's. I'm just saying. So where are you lagging? I was lagging in health. So it was making me really tired. I had to make those adjustments. I already feel better. I was lagging in my oneness with nature. One of the things that makes me feel good and clears my mind so I can get back in my creative zone. So identify where you're lagging. So you can focus on whichever specific area needs more attention, bringing your life back into balance and harmony. You guys, that is so powerful. So what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to dig into more of this chapter because he talks about um let me send let me let me see if i can pull this out really quick he talks about um maslow's hierarchy of needs but he does it in a different way he talks about it in a way where come on send it to my computer there we go there we go he talks about it in a way, um, let me open this up so you guys can see it. There we go. And look, once again, let me share my screen. I took a picture. Y'all see this? Let's make it bigger. I, this is a picture from the book. It's on page 117. What he's talking about here, what you are looking at, is he takes everything that Maslow did, Abraham Maslow, in that hierarchy of needs, and he puts it in quadrants. That's why it says Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So everything falls under either a physical need, okay, or a spiritual need. That's what you see on the left side. Physical needs are things that we require for life. We need them to live. Spiritual needs are not required for us to live, but they are required for us for our well-being. So that's where you can get out of harmony. Where I got out of harmony, it's not that it's going to kill me, but it messes up. It, 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 um, it, it bothers my well-being. I don't feel as well. I feel out of balance. I, I just don't feel as good, joyful, harmonious, those things. Now, along the top, you'll see where it says, world delivers physically and then you'll see at the top it says the world delivers it spiritually so we have a couple different ways that these things are delivered to us but everybody has physical and spiritual needs okay now if we all have physical and spiritual needs i don't want to make it that small if we all have physical and spiritual needs how do we get them this is what he talks about in the 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 last half of this chapter and you guys it's really powerful to understand um, this particular secret. And so I don't want to rush through it. I really want to dig into it. And so we're going to reserve this for tomorrow and we're going to go through this in detail. Cool. Okay. Hold on. I'm looking at some of the, um, uh, the comments. Oh, Eugenia said it, it started with one of the mentorship calls. That's good. With Randy and Wanda where they were talking about consistency and health back in February and I realized I wasn't taking care of me absolutely when when Randy Randy and Wanda for those of you who do not know Eugenia and I are part of the same wealth community and so we have some really incredible mentors the only way that guys that I can really honestly pour into you guys is because I have people that pour into me and it matters and those two they are a married couple they pour into us quite a bit Randy is incredible when it comes to his health and consistency and so one of the challenges that 
he gave us was just be consistent for 30 days. Just be consistent for 30 days and see see what happens. Tawana says that she needs daily praise and prayer breaks. Is that supposed to be breaks? Daily praise and prayer breaks. That's good. Um, Renee says, yes, that's so good. What do I need to do today? Renee, let me tell you. This is such a big deal. What do I need to do today? So let me give you guys an example and then we're going to shut this down until tomorrow. An example of what do I need to do today? So when I look at today, this way I don't get overwhelmed. Renee is also part of our wealth community. And I was, I'm telling you guys, just by the end of this past week, I was looking for, I was looking towards July 30th and 31st when we have our next kind of large event. And I was saying, because I did not do, I did not have the activity that I wanted to have last week. I was like, oh my God, treks. Tawana says her daily praise and prayer treks, walks. Got you. Got you. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Um, So I was saying because I didn't have the week that I wanted to have. Oh, my God. I'm not going to hit my goal for July. What? Demita, have you lost your mind? Listen, at the time of this recording, you guys, it is May the 26th. Really? Like real talk. It's May the 26th. How in the world? Because... I didn't hit a goal. Look at this nonsense. It is May the 26th. You guys see this? May the 26th. What does that mean? That means that, guess what? I got June <laughs> and July. <laughs> June and July. Do you guys see this? How in the world do I figure because this week, last week wasn't a good week that, oh my God, my entire goal is just shot to crap. But because I was out of harmony because i was out of harmony remember if you what did he say he said it perfectly you guys like he said it perfect perfectly he says that when people become despondent about not reaching a goal often it is because they have adopted a one dimensional view of our lives last week i was focused on one dimension that's where my mindset was although i had started to put some health things back in place okay but all my energy was in this one thing and because it didn't go the way i wanted it to go now i'm just devastated and i'm not gonna hit my goal for july that's the craziest mess ever okay so renee when i say what do i need to do today i had to break it down what do i need to do today so this is what it looks like what i need to do today let me give you guys a little bit of insight into what my one of my daily, some of my daily goals. One, I need to reach out to 10 prospects every single day. 10. Whether or not I get to schedule all of them, I might not get to schedule all of them on the same day, but that's okay. I need to physically reach out to 10 of them every day. I need to call 10 team members every single day. I need to call them. Whether or not I can physically speak to them I may not be able to, it may not be a good day for them, but that is exactly what I need to do. I need to touch base with my leaders daily, right? So those are business things that must be done today, okay? Business things that I got to do today. I got to check in with my own mentor. We got leadership Zoom coming up here in 45 minutes today. Next, that's business. That's one dimension. One, I got other dimensions to focus on. The other dimension, health. It's raining outside. I'm hoping we're supposed to get a break in the rain. That way, I guess what? I can go and I can do my run today. I'm also doing a squat challenge. That's the next dimension. I got to get that done. Okay, so what's the first thing I'm going to eat this morning? Because I have noticed that when I start the day right with the right thing, I told you guys this before. Guess what? The day can go good meal wise so what am i going to eat this morning that's the next dimension only focus on today so when i go for that run instead of me thinking about the half marathon i want to run because i'm not there yet it's been years since i've run over 10 miles i'm not there yet and so instead of thinking about that and getting overwhelmed i just gotta focus on today getting through this run today can i get through 45 minutes today yeah, I can do that. Today is just 45 minutes out of the whole day. And I know that when I finish it, I'm going to feel amazing because I accomplished it. And I want the feeling of feeling amazed. I want that. I just got to get through today. So that's health. Um, when I'm looking at 
the like breakfast i'm like this is boring i just gotta get through breakfast today just breakfast once i get through breakfast i don't have to focus on lunch until later i just need to get through this breakfast that's all can i eat this healthy breakfast can i get through this breakfast can i do that right now right today then guess what next thing i just need to make sure because i'm working on my marriage then I grab my book, The Love Dare, and I'm opening up my Kindle because I have it on my Kindle, okay? Then I open up on my Kindle app, and then guess what? I've repeated some days. When we were in Dallas, I actually didn't do it. So now, instead of me being on like day 14 or 15 like I should be, I'm on day eight, which is about love not being jealous. So I, need to, I read this yesterday, but I'm going to read it again today because I did not do the activity at the end of the chapter. So what does that mean? I need to actually do this today. This is me focusing on my marriage today. This is me getting some counsel. And then at the end of the chapter, listen, I have a dare, a love dare that I need to do. I need to do it today. The chapter is literally three or four pages long. It takes me five or six minutes to read it. That's it. Five or six minutes. I read it. And then I do the dare at the end. That is me giving some attention to my marriage today. What can I do to help my kids today? Like, how can I help today? What can I do today? That's me focused on, you've already seen, now I've taken care of business today. Taking care of health today. I'm not looking at tomorrow, just today. Taking care of my marriage today. I'm not looking at tomorrow, just today. The kids today, I'm not looking at tomorrow, just today. And now, what do I need to do for my spirituality? This is literally me talking to myself daily. You guys, I, I'm so serious. This is daily conversations. What do I need to do for my mindfulness today? Okay, so I need to make sure I read my scripture. I need to make sure I spend some time with God. And that doesn't take a really long time. I need to make sure the scripture says I'm praying without ceasing. So I'm doing those things throughout the course of the day. But then I need to steal away and take some time to meditate and visualize. What else do I need to do for my personal development today? Oh, I need to make sure I read a few more pages of a book that I'm reading called Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. I need to take some time and read a few pages today. Okay, that is literally how I get through today and I get overwhelmed about next week. Yes, there's that word again, today. <laughs> That's it. And so I'm praying that that is helpful. You know, that you guys got some value out of that. Again, thank you for your graciousness, allowing me to be late this morning. I got to get my son through eighth grade, y'all. We almost there. Today is the magical day. If when he turns in his work today, I've never prayed for just passing ever before. But I am for him today. <laughs> so we could get him out of eighth grade. And guess what? We get to start all over again in high school and created some even better habits. So you guys are amazing. I appreciate you so very much. Y'all don't understand. These calls are therapeutic for me too. And I'm grateful for y'all. Have an amazing rest of your, what day? Is it Wednesday? Oh my God. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Women winning Wednesday. Women crush Wednesday. I love my sisters. Let's go Queens. Have an amazing Wednesday. Um, remember share. Let's have some people join us. And tomorrow we're going to pick up more of this secret. We're not going to go into secret 16. We're going to dig some more into secret number 15 on tomorrow. All right. Love y'all. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. 7 a.m. Central. 8 a.m. Eastern. All right. Have an amazing day.